Dit is Papa Alfa Nel Eco Tango Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 4 augustus 2016. Dit is het bulletin van donderdag. Vandaag morsen en een afbeelding in PD50. De repeater PI2 FLD in Almere is weer terug in de ether. Gisteren werd deze opnieuw teruggeplaatst. De antennes staan volgens hamnieuws.nl tijdelijk op 25 meter hoogte in afwachting van een definitieve plek. De repeater ging in juli uit de lucht toen de mast waar de antennes staan werd ingekort en de aannemer niet op de hoogte bleek dat de antennes nog in gebruik waren. Gelukkig wil de masteigenaar meewerken aan een nieuwe plek voor de antennes. Deze heeft aangegeven de overwegen een puntstuk op de top te plaatsen. Op de mast die daarop komt kunnen dan de 3 dbd rondstralen voor PI2 FLD komen te staan en drie dipolen rondom voor de op hetzelfde punt opgestelde APRS digipieter PI1 FLD. De SSTV-foto van vandaag is een luchtopname van de PI2 FLD locatie. Op de site van PA3 ANG een beschrijving van de open spot hotspot voor meerdere dv-modus. Bijzonderheden van het apparaatje zijn dat je hem zo op de router kunt inpluggen, dus geen Raspberry Pi of PC nodig. Bijzonder aan het apparaatje is verder dat het ook in cross-mode werkt. Te lezen allemaal op www.pa3ang.nl op de middengolf is er ook weer wat veranderd. In de Gelderse plaats Huizen is een zendvergunning uitgereikt voor een 100 watt station op 8,28 kHz. In de plaats Emst kwam er een 1 watt station bij. Verder meldt de site radiofreak.nl dat Radio 538 binnenkort stopt met uitzenden vanuit Limburg op de middengolf op 8,91 kHz. Nog niet bekend is of deze frequentie dan vrijkomt voor de 100 watt aanvragen, maar het lijkt in elk geval wel waarschijnlijk dat het zo is. Houd er rekening mee dat een hele trits aan korte golffrequenties in met name de 40 en de 20 meter band momenteel in gebruik zijn in verschillende landen in Midden-Amerika en het zuiden van de VS vanwege de tropische storm Ul die momenteel in Midden-Amerika aan land komt. Komen we nu toe aan het slot van de serie De Dokter is in van de RRL. Aansluitend volgt het begin van een nieuwe serie over magnetische loopantennes. Okay, Joel, it's question time. All right. Here we go. This is uh, this is one from Phil, N1 Yankee, Papa Sierra. And he asks, I have a lot of RG8U coaxial segments around. Uh, some have solid polyethylene dielectrics, and some have foam dielectrics. Should I worry about the different velocity factors if I interconnect them to make a single antenna run? Okay, Phil. Well, in most cases, or in many cases, it doesn't matter. You aren't really that concerned about how long it takes the signal to get from your radio to your antenna since it's traveling at some fraction of the speed of light and whether it's going 67% or 83% of the fraction of the speed of light it's going to get to your antenna pretty quickly much more quickly than it will get to the station at the far end so they won't notice the difference but it it does make a difference if you have antennas in which the phase of multiple elements that are interconnected by coax is important this would be uh, oh let's say you had stacked yaggies and typically with stacked yaggies um, you want to feed the ele- the uh, driven elements in the same phase so that the signal goes in the direction the Yaggies are pointed. If uh, you use the same length of coax to each, and one of them is foam and one of them is solid poly, the phase will be different, and you'll actually end up steering the signal not in the axis of the Yaggies, but either up or down from that, which probably is not what you want to have happen. So you may inadvertently change your long-range 2-meter multi-element Yagi from a weak signal long distance mode into a satellite antenna without realizing (laughs) it. And people have done this. Similarly, if you're making a uh, four square antenna that has a requirement of each of the four corners having a particular phase, it's important that you take into account the relative velocity of the signal getting to each of the elements so they come out in the same phase and the lobes go where you think they will. And, it, and it's a little tricky because from an instrumentation point of view, unless you're act- actually measuring the phase, it's very difficult to know you have a problem and it just the antenna will not work as well as you thought. So for a straight run of coax going from one place to one transmitter to one antenna, the velocity of propagation doesn't make any difference. As long as they're all the same characteristic impedance, the system will look the way it's supposed to, it'll work the way it's supposed to. And the uh, foam dielectric will have the benefit of having a little less loss. The only other thing you have to watch out for with foam dielectric coax is it has a less forgiving turns radius requirement. If you do tight turns, as for example around a toroid core, you can have the center conductor actually migrate through the foam dielectric to the point where it shorts out. So you have to be careful of that. So it's important in a couple of ways, but for your particular case of going from a radio to an antenna, If it's not bent too much, it'll work just fine.
Excellent. Thank you, Doctor. My pleasure. This is ARRL, The Doctor is In. And now, here's your host, QST Editor-in-Chief Steve Ford, WB8IMY, and the Doctor himself, QST Contributing Editor Joel Hallis, W1ZR. Hello and welcome to another episode of ARRL, The Doctor is In. I'm Steve Ford, WB8IMY. And I'm Joel Hallis, W1ZR. Joel, we're going to talk about loops, but we're going to talk about tiny loops. Ah, Tiny loops, only two, three feet in diameter, otherwise known as magnetic loops. However, you have to begin by telling me, are they truly magnetic in the sense of an MRI machine in your living room or, you know, that pulls the hip joint out of your leg or, or what are we talking about here? Well, they, they, are, they have a very strong localized magnetic field associated with them and, and the smaller they are and the more power they have in them the more magnetic field you have and it, it can be dangerous um it uh, will not pull your hip apart i don't think but um but <laughs> how dangerous are we talking about here? well you know i don't have the numbers in front of me um in fact kai siowak wrote a addendum which was in tech correspondence not too long ago I that's believe, right yes discussing that and he had put together some of the original work on rf safety that was built into the arl publications on that and realized he hadn't really covered that in sufficient detail and i suggest uh, looking that up if somebody's going to be seriously using a small loop in an area where there are people it the magnetic mm-hmm. field is a local phenomenon that that drops off rapidly and it's important to note that the fields no matter what happens locally around the antenna, the electromagnetic radiation that leaves the antenna and goes off into space looks the same and smells the same as radiation from any antenna. So There's nothing magical about it. There's nothing magical about it at distance, but within the confines of the loop and right around it, there are some local um, effects that, that do need to be taken into account. So it is. it does have a strong magnetic field, and it's all concentrated in that one place, which is kind of the big difference Mm -hmm. so it needs to be taken into account so if you if you have a loop on your back you probably don't want to run high power well no or or near my head yes exactly well that might be okay but but (laughs) (laughs) Are, are these the miracle antennas everybody says they are really well they're miracle in the sense that they can do a far better job on hf than anything else their size i think for their size. Yeah. I yes. mean, you can make other antennas, types of antennas, such as dipoles and so forth, small by loading them an incredible amount, but um, but the efficiency of those goes down very rapidly. Now, there are efficiency problems associated with loops, uh, small loops also, and we should make a point here that small loops are very different from large loops. It's not, yes. it's not the same kind of thing as small dipoles and large dipoles, because those are essentially the same except for their size. Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks om 1900 uur te beluisteren op PI2NOS en ochtends om half elf. Aanvullende informatie bij de uitzendingen is te vinden op www.pa0ete.nl. De repeater is van iedereen.